Let's take a look at a cartoon view of the operational analysis technique, the Hall Plot. We start with a profile of the ground elevation, then add a couple of lines representing the reservoir or formation to be used for injection. So you could also consider this to be the injection interval. The formation is shown as a constant thickness h, though that never actually occurs in nature. The completion of the disposal well sets the basis of how much fluid can physically be disposed of or injected into the formation. The flowing pressure from the well must be greater than the reservoir pressure in order to inject fluids. Otherwise, the formation water will flow up the pipe. So let's add the tubing to our completed injection or disposal well in the diagram. Information to note includes the inside tubing diameter, D sub W, the radius of either the casing or open hole, R sub W E, and the vertical height of the tubing or water column from the top down to the packer or perforations, capital H sub V. These pieces of information, along with the fluid density and surface injection pressure, are used to calculate the bottom hole flowing pressure. The bottom hole flowing pressure is symbolized by capital P sub W F. Also shown is the symbol capital P sub E at a distance R sub E, which stands for the original static reservoir pressure and the effective radius. Stated another way, the reservoir pressure not affected by human operations. A simplified cross-sectional view of a well completion as shown here is essentially a series of circles representing the hole left by the drill bit in dark gray, the outside casing, outer edge of the dark blue ring, and the production tubing, inner edge of the blue ring. Water injected into the formation is assumed to flow radially outward into the reservoir. Several things can affect the pore space near the wellbore, including the accumulation of fines, the precipitation of minerals that can block the flow space, and the caving of the borehole, which creates either a larger space or fills up the hole with debris. Additionally, the rock may be fractured near the wellbore, either from drilling and completion operations or the natural rock character. Reservoir engineers use calculations to quantify these effects in a parameter called a skin factor. Sometimes a well cannot be placed vertically over the target, and the well is drilled at an angle. As long as the section of the hole through the injection interval is fairly vertical, the model formulas will not have to be adjusted. In slant or deviated wells, the measured depth could be considered to be the hypotenuse in a right triangle, with the long vertical leg representing the true vertical thickness. For our purposes, we will assume that the operator has reported a true vertical depth to the top of the perforations or packer or that the well is essentially vertical. Howard Hall created this method in 1963 to evaluate use of surfactants in water flood operations. In his method, Hall used Darcy's law integrating across the time steps of the operational injection data, date, volume, and pressure. This is shown by plotting the running cumulative injection, X, against the running cumulative of the Hall integral, y. The incremental Hall value is the difference between the flowing bottom hole pressure and the unaffected reservoir pressure multiplied by the time step. Darcy's law assumes the disposal zone or reservoir has constant properties and that flow is radial from the wellbore. Another form of Darcy's law is used in the zone of endangering influence calculations. The question of pressure difference based on elevation always arises. The model brings everything to a constant datum or elevation so that the difference in pressure from elevation changes is not a concern. To mimic this, we are using the lower dashed line through the injection interval as our datum. The red oval represents a circle generated by the distance from the center of the wellbore out to the area of unaffected, or static, reservoir pressure, P sub E, at a distance of R sub E. As discussed earlier, the effective wellbore radius includes any skin effects. It would also include a correction if the wellbore was not essentially vertical through the injection interval. 
Because the well is injecting fluids, the pressure flowing from the wellbore is highest in the center of the circle. When the well is shut in, fluids may flow back into the wellbore depending on the static pressures. As shown in the pressure diagram, pressure decreases with radial distance until the unaffected or static reservoir pressure P, e, P sub E is reached. This Darcy flow model uses simplifying assumptions of homogeneity and isotropy, specifically constant thickness, porosity, and permeability in all directions. As noted earlier, all pressures are converted to the specific datum represented by the depth from the surface to the top of the injection depth or packer. So, from our little picture model, we are collecting the well operating data for time increments of surface flowing pressure converted to bottom hole and associated disposal volume. The longer the well is in operation, or the more volume that is disposed of, the further out the effective radius moves to still reach the original static pressure. Shown here as a difference between the two circles moving from increment 1 to increment 2. The essence is tracking the shape of the plot with time, i.e. when radial flow occurs there will be an early straight line segment from plotting cumulative volume versus the running hall integral multiplied by time. After all the calculations are made and the information plotted, any change in the slope on the hall plot away from the initial straight line radial flow pattern indicates a change in flow from the wellbore out into the reservoir. Specifically, it shows how the injection pressures are responding to fluid and pressure movement away from the wellbore further and further into the reservoir, as well as any changes in the near wellbore skin factor. Simply put, when the slope increases, moves up faster, there are problems pumping the fluid into the reservoir. If the slope decreases, then it is easier to inject fluids. While no slope change reflects no change to conditions either out in the reservoir or with the wellbore skin factor. The plot shows the combined influence of near wellbore conditions and reservoir quality as the cumulative injection volume influence reaches further and further from the wellbore. If a simplistic assumption of a completely homogeneous reservoir with an accurate original static reservoir pressure and associated distance to it were true, then the only thing changing would be the skin factor or the viscosity characteristic of the fluid injected. If it were in fact only wellbore mechanics causing the change, then buildup in the tubing or near the perforations may cause the slope to increase. On the other hand, a well cleanout or frack job may cause the slope to go flat or decrease. This skin factor could be verified from a good interpretation of a falloff test. However, nature is rarely uniform, so you are looking at changes not only close in to the wellbore but all the connectivity changes moving further and further away from the wellbore. If the zone was ever productive, net pay and permeability maps would provide a good indication of the expected character changes in transmissibility. Transmissibility is permeability times net thickness over fluid viscosity. The higher the transmissibility, the flatter or lower the slope. For example, if the slope flattens out for a well in a Gulf of Mexico depositional setting, the fluid may have crossed a growth fault, accessing a far thicker reservoir section. While for a well in a mid-continent, deep carbonate formation, the flow may have reached the end of the radial or matrix conductivity and switched to a fracture flow of one kind or another. Keeping in mind that fractures are generally discontinuous in nature, the break follows the greatest zones of weakness, either open or that the fluid pressure can open, extend, or create, whether cutting across the formation or along parting planes. This will likely show as a plugging, breaking response character. Among the major groups of other geological or structurally based possibilities is the presence of a sealing fault. This would most likely show up as a difficulty in injection as the pressure increases along the boundary or boundaries. Lastly, 
there is a non-sealing fault within the flow path or pressure front from the well. How this change affects the plot will be a function of how much of the flow is changed by that fault. But any way you look at it, if there's a fault there partially sealing, it will have slightly reduced permeability. So one would expect that the flow will be more difficult and you will have a slightly increased slope from what you previously did with the radial flow. As you can see from all the possibilities, combining the Hall plot characteristics with known or expected geoscience information, well completion work or workovers, and other reservoir engineering test results is essential.